All right. So I think the numbers are steady. So I think we, we can start. Uh, so welcome everyone to this um, information session on our uh, MSc course in health data analytics and machine learning. So I will walk you through um, some slides explaining what the course uh, is uh, organized around. You have the opportunity to ask questions in the chats, and then we can have uh, some exchanges. And uh, uh, Sabrina, you will um, you will uh, tell us what the questions are, and then we'll, we'll discuss them. So first of all, let me introduce Sabrina. So Sabrina is the senior teaching fellow, co-coordinating the course. I'm Mark Shadowhayam, uh, and I'm the leader of the course, and I'm a professor in uh, biostatistics. So uh, the MSc in House Data Analytics is a program that we've um, uh, implemented uh, five uh, years ago with a clear objective in mind, which was twofold. One was to extend the use of advanced statistical and machine learning approaches uh, to end users, me meaning that you have people with data, complicated data, rich data, and we wanted them to be able to use more cutting edge approaches to get the most of the data. And on the other side, we also wanted to have students with theoretical and quantitative backgrounds to apply and extend their expertise uh, in health science. So we've got people with um, uh, knowledge on modeling uh, statistics and to make sure that these uh, skills could be used in health sciences. So overall, and this is, you will see in, in the presentation, that's I think the overarching structure of the course is we want to build a, a multidisciplinary culture in health data analytics that take the, the, the best of both molecular, uh, medical, epidemiological expertise and uh, quantita quantitative and theoretical uh, sciences. So basically our objective in the course, and this is how we've implemented it, is to make sure that we define health data analytics as a very nice and harmonious mix of these skills. So corollary to that definition of our um, course and of our uh, discipline, we have a target audience uh, uh, in mind, which includes strong students with a methodological background in math, stats, or econometrics, who are willing to move to an applied field, that field being health sciences. And on the other side, strong students with a more applied background in epi, medical sciences, biology, willing to learn about uh, analyzing and integrating complex and high dimensional data. Overall, the, and that's really the motto of the um, of the course, is to implement a collaborative and cross-fertilizing research environment. And we have our uh, motto, which is we want to train experts and not nerds. And so it looks like a, a pun but or a, like a joke, but that's really what we're aiming at, that we want to have people going out of the course with knowledge on how to use advanced techniques, not just for the sake of, of being very technical and applying new fancy methods, but we want to use the best method to address a real question. So that's really the objective of the course. So it takes two forms. One is to identify what are the questions of interest. And among the um, existing methods, what is the best approach to take to address that question? So this is really the objective of the course driven by a question, use the most suitable approach. So just in a nutshell, this is how the course has looked since its first co cohort in 2018, where we recruited 17 students, most of whom are pursuing currently an academic uh, career. Um, then in 2019, 2020, we recruited our second cohort where we received 200 eligible application of which we recruited 27 students from 10 different countries with a nice mix of backgrounds, including medical doctors, mathematicians, biologists, engineers, epidemiologists. The third cohort, uh, was during the COVID period and was online and included 43 students. We received 600 applications, 
of which more than half were eligible, we made 63 offers. And uh, last year's cohort included 36 students out of 400 applications and 57 offers made. So current cohort uh, includes similar kind of numbers. We received over 500 application, 263 were eligible, resulting in 64 offers. And we enrolled uh, and 34 uh, uh, students were enrolled. So the demographics of the cohort includes a, a slight majority of women, uh, includes people from 14 different countries, from Europe, Middle East, Asia, and the US, with a very nice uh, diversity of background, including uh, methodological, um, theoretical math and stats, engineering students, students from human sciences, epidemiology, biology, including molecular biology, pharmacy, and medicine. So pretty much all the spectrum of um, disciplines that we were targeting are represented in this cohort. And we also are proudly recruiting students with a large range of uh, experiences, ranging from more younger students just out of the BSc to trained professionals willing to uh, to gain more knowledge on 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 these uh, analysis and these methods, so so far we've been successful in recruiting the multicultural and multidisciplinary multidisciplinary cohort we were aspiring for, and we're quite happy with this, and we uh, intend to continue in having that uh, nice cultural mix in our course. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through how the um, the um, the uh, the year is organized so it's organized in three terms so term one is what we can call if you want the wrap up or the warm up sorry um uh, term where you have four to four and a half days of taught uh modules uh and taught uh teach uh sorry you've got four to four and a half uh days of teaching uh, and one one day or half a day of uh, independent study or um, or uh, revision. However, in these sessions, you also have uh, sometimes seminars or general clubs, which I'm going to talk about later. You also have during those free uh, slots some additional resources that are implemented uh, in real life. So basically, if we identify. Uh, some gaps or some questions that you may have, we 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 implement some additional uh, sessions or lectures or seminars so that you get familiar with it and you don't you don't stay uh, with unanswered questions. And we also uh, have student presentations in these slots. So basically, it's a bit of a packed um, uh, term, but uh, very uh, enriching. So, as I said, term one is made of. Uh, uh, foundation modules, or we can call it the build-up modules, where you will be introduced first to uh, statistical thinking and data analysis. So uh, this module is led by uh, Jeff Eaton. And then the idea is to uh, get you up to speed in the main statistical approaches that are used in epidemiology. So that's typically a module that is very, very important for students with a less of a methodological background. And for the students with more of a math background, it's more like a revision or trying to see things in a different context. Then corollary to this, we have a module called Principles and Methods of Epi, led by Philippos Philippidis, where main methods, designs, and concepts of epidemiology are introduced. And again, this is a module that is very important for students for uh, with a more methodological background, not necessarily uh, with ex expertise or exposure to epi. And it's more of a revision uh, module for students with more of a, uh, a clinical slash epidemiological background. Then we have a module uh, led by Sabrina uh, called clinical data management, where basically this is all about how you design a database, how you query a database, and how you make sure that your data are stored curated uh, with the appropriate legal security and ethical constraints. So this module is really important and very specific to health data analytics. 
It's basically how you can make sure that you've got a source of data that you can rely on, and that is adhering to all the legal standards. Then you have <clears throat> a module uh, called Molecular Epidemiology, led by uh, Dr. Uh, Abbas Tegem, which is introducing you uh, to uh, omics data, so basically molecular profiles, all types of omics data, what they measure, how they're made of, and what's the main way of looking at them. So basically, this is a very important module because some of the examples that will be taken in term two are uh, using molecular data. So this is really crucial uh, module where you get acquainted to different uh, omics profiles, their diversity, their complementarity, and how to uh, analyze them and the, the richness of the information they contain. Then we have uh, a final module, which is split between the two terms called translational data science, laid by Sabrina and Verena Zuba. So this module is split in between term one and term two. And in term one, in this uh, module, you will be uh, exposed to the practical aspects of implementing rigorous, transparent, and reproducible research. So basically, you will be taught how, how to code properly, how to make sure that your code is flawless, well presented, easy to share, and easy to rerun so that the community can use it. Also, how you can make sure that your results are up to date, traceable, that you can always reproduce your results at a given time point, and that you have appropriate versioning of your uh, results. So, this is quite technical, but this is very important for term two and to ensure that all the research that you're going to produce is adhering to all the rigor and transparency standards that are needed. But in term two, which starts in January, you have similar type of schedule, quite busy, although you have one day of, uh, of uh, uh, independent uh, research or independent work, uh, split between four different modules, uh, which I'm going to go into the details uh, in the next slide. And at the end of this uh, term, then you have the allocation of the research project for uh, term three. So in a nutshell, you have uh, machine learning, which is a core uh, module for, for term two on the Monday. Then you have uh, two five weeks modules, one advanced analytics, which is going to introduce you to, um, to um, uh, specific models that you will need to know about when you're going to um, uh, be uh, taught about population health analytics. So this, these are two companion modules of uh, five weeks each. Then uh, on Thursday, you've got computational epidemiology, which is more about uh, uh, statistical approaches for uh, data analysis and integration. And then you've got the second part of the translational data science on the Friday. So more, uh, more uh, in-depth description of the, those modules. So um, machine learning led by uh, Dragana Vukovic will introduce you to machine learning algorithms uh, and their implementation and their interpretation. So that will include decision trees, SVM, and neural and Bayesian networks. But basically, the idea from this module is that you get exposure to these methods, so you know what the algorithms are doing, how they're implemented. But more importantly, you are able to have a critical thinking on the results they produce and to interpret the results they produce in a very rigorous um, and uh, relevant way. Then corollary to machine learning, you have computational epidemiology module, which I lead, which is, if you want, similar to machine learning, but more with a statistical flavor. So the idea here is that we use approaches for uh, data profiling and data integration, taking examples of omics data, because they're the most complex data where you've got, uh, they're large and they're very complicated, very large number of measurements. So taking the example of omics data, but again, these methods are applicable to any type of data sets. You will be uh, uh, taught about different approaches for, um, for um, <clears throat> analyzing and integrating blocks of complicated data. Again, you will be introduced to the, to the methodological foundation of these approaches, to the implementation uh, that are routinely used, and importantly, uh, on how to interpret and critically appraise the results they, they, um, 
they produce. Then you will also have the second part of translational data science, where taking on board all the um, teaching that you had in term one about uh, rigorous research, then you will apply all the methods that you've learned in machine learning and computational epi to a real data set on a weekly basis. And you will take from getting the data to write, you will be walked through all the steps from getting the data, curating the data to writing a paper. So during the entire term, you will start with a data set with a real research question. You will apply the methods that you've learned in machine learning in Compepi to this data to address your question. And then you will uh, you will uh, end up at the end of the 10 weeks with a report that looks like a paper and with a presentation which has the format of a presentation one could give in a um, <clears throat> in a conference. Then the two twin um, uh, modules, advanced analytics, where you'll be introduced to other families of models, including time series, hierarchical, spatial temporal, and disease modeling to introduce to the methods that are routinely used in population. Uh, sorry, I forgot to say that this module is led by Monica Pirani. And then the final module led by Professor Zati is more about applying these advanced analytics techniques to population health and um, to basically introduce you to uh, global uh, and environmental health research as done in the department. Now, what I didn't mention uh, is that all of the teaching includes a lot of project work. Uh, so you've got project within the modules where you work in groups, you have toy example data sets, you're supervised by your GTAs or tutors in the practical sessions, and you're, uh, you're asked to uh, apply on the, on the spot uh, the method that you've just learned about. Then you've got a uh, translational uh, research projects in the TDS, where again, you're working on groups, real data sets, and real research questions that have not been uh, addressed yet. So it's not like a fake uh, fake research, it's actual uh, research questions that we have and that you are going to be working on. You're going to be supervised by um, an expert uh, knowing the data and knowing the, the field, and you will be asked to uh, to uh, generate an analytical plan to well, basically to curate your data, to do the appropriate pre-processing of the data, filtering and so on and so forth, then populate an analytical plan, then implement it using the methods that you've learned in term two, and end up with a uh, research uh, project report that looks like a paper and uh, a corresponding presentation. And then there is the individual research project, which will start in term three, uh, so that's from April, May to September, where basically you also have a real data set with a real research question, working with the experts in, in the field, and you'll be evaluated through a presentation and a report at the end of September. Um, so as I said, there are module projects. So for instance, in computational IP, you've got a mini project taking two weeks to be completed using real data sets, mostly from exposome projects that we're involved in. Then you have the TDS project that are using uh, real data sets. This year, for instance, we're using uh, UK Biobank data. Um, uh, and then the research project is, is basically, you have a portfolios of projects that you, you are being offered. So this year we've got more than 70 projects offered for our students, again, real and explore data set from many, many different sources <clears throat> from the department, beyond the department within the college, uh, in other universities, as well as in uh, industries. So again, here, the idea is that your research project in your term three research project uh, should address a real research question and that will produce a, a research piece that will be useful for uh, the community, should it be the research community, the industry. And so far, uh, quite a few of the research projects have uh, been converted into a publication. So these are just examples of uh, research projects that were offered uh, uh, in the past year. So we've had, of course, no big surprise, a lot of, um, of 
project related to COVID uh, dynamics, uh, risk, and so on. So we, we, we've populated quite a few of them in the past two years. Uh, then there's been quite a few projects as well on molecular phenotyping for several clinic conditions, including asthma, cancer, cardiovascular disease. We've had also um, quite a few projects in population health relating to modeling exposures, characterizing hospitalization uh, burden or um, also image processing and so on and so forth. And then um, infectious disease projects about uh, more dynamic modeling of uh, epidemic outbreaks. Then we've had some more machine learning flavored projects focusing on the development of interpretable machine learning approaches uh, to address um, uh, risk prediction for cancer, asthma, um, neuro, di neuro diseases, and so on and so forth. So quite a few range of application of um, interpretable uh, machine learning. Then there's quite a few projects uh, on image processing. Should it be for a uh, diagnosis, should it be for uh, characterizing the uh, urban environment? Quite a few projects were uh, offered along these lines. And of course, uh, uh, quite a few projects as well on, on building predictive models using neural nets and so on and so forth, uh, using either images or um, real-time trajectories and so on and so forth. One point to, um, to note is that projects that we offer are not only uh, academic projects. We also have um, partnerships with several industries. So that includes big companies like Visa, AZ, uh, GSK. And we've got also connections with uh, uh, startups. And one final point I just wanted to mention is that if you come, you have an, an idea of what you want to work on then you could also initiate your own project. So either you come, you know exactly whom you want to work with, and we make sure, well, we, we evaluate if that's possible, and we make sure that the project that you want to work on is ticking all the boxes and all the learning objectives that the uh, research project is meant to, uh, to um, achieve. Or we can help you identify people. If you've got a domain that you want to work on, we can help you identify who could be uh, a good supervision su supervision team and make sure that you have a project that not only fulfills the requisites of the course, but also fulfills your uh, aspiration. Uh, yeah, and just to finish, uh, beyond those top uh, elements that we've just uh, gone through, there are some additional resources in the, uh, in the course that are important. So you've got optional teaching, which are quite recommended. So there's mathematical refresher on linear algebra to make sure that everyone speaks the same language in term one and are able to understand uh, the basic concepts that are uh, underlying uh, linear algebra concepts. Then there is a refresher on molecular biology as a companion to uh, the molecular epi um, module. And then there's a focus on several uh, specific uh, uh, specific algorithms. So for instance, we've got a focus on MCMC estimation. Well, we have the, these, uh, these optional teaching. And as I mentioned earlier on, when we identify with the students that there's a gap or that there's something that was not fully understood, we also uh, populate extra sessions to make sure that no one's left behind and that everyone works uh, at the same level. Then there is also a series of seminar that includes uh, the school seminar where you invited to, but there's also a series of uh, journal clubs that are led by the students, where it works in a cycle of three, um, uh, uh, in a cycle where you have the students or the group of students that are presenting a paper, a seminal paper in front of the main author of that paper. Then there is an exchange between the students and the main author. And then after the presentation of the students and the Q&A uh, between the, the author and the students, then there is an, uh, a, a presentation by the main author explaining uh, the development of the work since that seminal paper. So we have uh, four to five such sessions uh, every year. And then there are some journal clubs and uh, additional seminars. 
You also are invited to quite a few keynote lectures where you've got international experts in the field that are giving you guest lectures and give you exposure to how the methods that you're learning during the course are used in real life. These are very important uh, resources where not only you're able to realize that what you learn has a direct and important um, implication in daily research, but also it's a very interesting opportunity for you to network, to meet people that are usually difficult to connect with. And it could also be a great opportunity to identify people you want to collaborate with in the, in, in the future or during your uh, research project. With that being said, I think we can open the floor for questions, Sabrina. Great. Um, so first question is from Kimberly uh, Brooks. So she's saying very detailed presentation. This program seems very technical with regards to the courses and computer science concepts. How many students have you accepted with a strictly medical science background? Half of the cohort. So uh, it's a very legitimate comment. And I know that the presentation looks very technical, but we take uh, students by the hand, irrespective of their um, background. And we've had quite a few extremely successful uh, medical students with no prior expertise in computational uh, methods completing the course. Uh, well, I mean, it happened, I, I think, three out of the four that in the top five students at the end of the course, three were medical doctors. And uh, some of them are pursuing their careers in the more computational medicine field. So no worries if you don't have any ex expertise in, in stats, then you will gain it from the course. And that's how we design. Okay, next question is, are students allocated these research projects or can students be, pick between epidemiology, machine learning and industry-based projects? No, no, it's your choice. So you've got uh, a portfolio of uh, projects that you are offered. You, as I said, you can also do yours and, 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 and get yours. Uh, but uh, basically you choose you choose there's a bit of a competition because sometimes some projects are more popular than others and you have um, several students uh, on the same one but at the end of the day so far in the five iteration everyone got a project they were excited about and so you choose the main theme should it be epi should it be ml and usually it ends up being a, a combination of all bless you sabrina thank you <laughs> Um, so the next question is by Vicky Wang. Have there been projects that have a community-based focus? Uh, sorry, community-based focus. Nonprofit work with local partners, for example. Uh, yes, yes. Th th there has been, uh, we we've been collaborating with uh, some, some uh, NGOs, if that's the question, to, uh, to work on analyzing the data and so on. For instance, um, we, we were uh, we were involved in that project that was looking at uh, I don't remember precisely. Maybe you remember better than me, Sabrina, the, uh, with, with the phone call and psychology. Yeah, shout. shout. So yeah. that's part of mental health innovations. Yeah. Um, so one of our uh, collaborators or contacts put us in touch with them, and that's how we have had um, two projects with um, mental health innovations through the shout program for the last two years. Um, okay, next question. Um, how many students have you accepted with a strictly math stack background? The other half, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and again, uh, yeah, it's it's roughly 50-50. Well, with, with um, and the uh, the math students have a uh, a hard time in term one to get uh up to speed with the uh, biology and so on, but they, they get into it quite uh, at the end of term one. They, they know what they should be knowing about uh, biology, uh, molecules, and, and so on. So they can, they know, they're prepared to learn or relearn the algorithm in term two with the focus of the application on health data. 
Um, what are the area of PhD that formal? I think the question is, what is the area of um, of uh, further research for a PhD okay. that previous students have looked at? So uh, no big surprise, epidemiology, um, population health, and uh, well, basically this, this, this is the main scope where basically I would say that the uh, trademark of our students pursuing a PhD is that they're not going to be doing classical analysis, they're going to be doing more challenging analysis of complicated data. So it's going to be all the fields, should it be uh, any field uh, in epi, any field in public health, but with a strong focus on, on using complicated, uh, analyzing complex data in the um, best possible way. So it, it, it usually includes, if for population health, there's a lot of machine learning for image processing, all these kind of stuff. For epi, it's really about uh, data integration, network modeling, and this kind of stuff. But basically, all the, and, and then at the end of the day, there's also some um, some students that are doing PhDs in, in, in related, but a bit more far away uh, fields like social sciences and so on. But mostly it's public health, and health data, health research, pretty much. Okay, so I'm going to merge two questions together. Um, and I think it's been made clear, but just to emphasize, um, and I guess, uh, so the question is, I come from a strictly biological background, or I come from a strictly machine learning mathematical background, uh, with a major in economics, um, for example, am I eligible for the course? Yes. What yeah. counts is, uh, again, and this is just to be totally transparent, what counts when we're doing the selection is the excellence of your application and the relevance of your um, of your uh, motivation. So basically, you're, you, you, you need to, to be motivated and tell us why you, you're interested in our course. And as long as this is convincing and that you've got the relevant uh, background which is very vast it's not a, it's not a topic it's a, just a, what you've done before and, and that your excellence can be shown then yeah you're you're eligible and excellence is not only academic it could also be um your professional career and so on yeah so uh the next person has three questions um so well tackle one question at a time. Uh, where do previous graduates go after graduation? Hospitals, consulting, pharmaceutical companies, or go on to pursue PhDs? Well, all of, well, uh, all of that. So we've got a reasonable fraction continuing in academia. I don't remember exactly the numbers, uh, Sabrina, but uh, I would say up to 30% are continuing for a PhD. Quite a few students go for uh, industry. So pharma, uh, data scientists uh, in big companies. Some others are doing work for NGOs and we've got quite a few of them as data scientists. And then we also have people uh, joining startups. So it's really, really vast. And uh, well, most of them have a relay, uh, most of these jobs wherever they are, are related to health, but sometimes people, we, we have a, one student who went up in a company that was doing uh, some food processing and uh, yeah, so it's very vast. Uh, what kind of support does the program offer in terms of employment? Of? Employment. Uh, well, 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 basically, you've got access to a very large, when it comes to doing PhDs, you've got access to a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, PhD offers and studentship uh, competitions, and you're usually well placed to, to get those. Then when it comes to uh, uh, working in industry through the program itself, you've got exposure and connections with very relevant specialists in these companies. And then you also have access to the entire imperial network, which is rather big for uh, uh, job adverts and uh, well, basically the usual imperial uh, network. 
Yeah, and if I may add to that, so um, we also sometimes have uh, companies um, contact us to uh, have a seminar on on the company, uh, so where they describe the company, what the company is about, and where they also advertise internships and so on. Yeah. So there's also that connection. There's also the research projects. With some of them are external, um, and we have seen some students continue on to work um, at those companies as well. Um, and then um, we also. A lot of students come to us to write references. Obviously, the reference um, will be um, highly relevant. The more contact you have uh, with the person who is writing the reference. Um, so generally, that will be your master's uh, research project supervisor or a lecturer that you've spent a lot of time with or Mark or myself, as long as we're quite uh, familiar with you. So that, that's essentially how we're currently helping with the employment and putting you in touch, as Mark said, with other people. Um, the last question from this person is, is there an opportunity to participate in scientific research? Is it helpful post pursuing a PhD if I currently have no research experience? So, yeah, you've got exposure to, uh, well, through many, all the projects that you're going to be working on are uh, potentially publishable. So we, we've, got, we've got examples of module specific um, project that have been submitted for uh, publications, your research project in the summer, the individual one is also highly publishable. So there's op ample opportunities to get access to actual research and to, to be part of uh, research initiatives then through, through these projects. There was another question I don't remember. Uh, it's just essentially about that. So is there opportunity to participate in scientific yeah, research, yeah. even if they don't have the scientific uh, oh, yeah, research yeah. experience? Yeah, that's that's one learning objective of the course is that mm. you get exposure to uh, how research is uh, going and how is it organized? Yeah. And as Mark said before, so you've got all of these. There are ample opportunities throughout the course where you uh, do um, projects or research projects, so namely in TDS. So translational data science and computational epi in advanced analytics. And then, so those are generally group ones. Um, in machine learning, there's also a project. And then ultimately your own individual research project in term three. And for those, you get a lot of exposure. Okay. Um, now, do we need to have basic programming knowledge to be selected for the course? No. You, you, you could come as you are, and you will learn what you need to learn in the um, uh, in the module. So we'll take you from 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 scratch if needs be, and you, you you'll learn what you need to. Now, in practice, some students prefer to come prepared, so we can we can give you some recommended recommended reading or practice before, but that's not a requisite, and that's really optional and up to you to to do it. Yeah, and, and before we before you enroll on the course, we send out, um, sorry, not before you enroll, before the term, term one starts, we send out um, some, um, some materials that you might want to browse through or go through uh, when it comes to R and Python. So you can build up your skills so you're a little bit more comfortable, but we don't expect you to do that. It's just for those students who are just a little bit worried on, on that front. Um, okay, so the next question is, so what is the main uh, software for the course, R or Python? And for database, you do a bit of SQL as well. Yeah, so it's, as so you have SQL in clinical data management, um, and that's your database query, and then R and Python across the different modules. Um, yeah, and then your research project is going to be very much the applicate or the software you use in your research project is going to be very much driven by your supervisor and their group. But mostly it's R and Python. Yeah. Um, so I've answered that question. Right. Is it possible for a student who does not have a science background in his or her first degree to pursue the program? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, so you just really yeah. need to apply if you're interested. Um, then the next question by Vicky Wang is, how translatable is this degree to job markets abroad? Well, very. I mean, we, I'm not aware of any of our students having a problem getting a, a job afterwards anywhere. Yeah, so a lot of the um, methods that you learn on the course, well, the course is in health data analytics, but a lot of the methods that you learn are translatable to other areas of knowledge. Um, so, you know, we can have students going into finance, into uh, insurance, into many different areas. So um, because it's quite methodological, you'll learn about the methods and then there's always the data context. So you'll learn all about this in uh, the different courses that we see that we have on the course. Um, next question, sorry, but are the job prospects good after graduation? What percentage of your students graduate and find employment after? As I said, I'm not aware of any student having uh, a problem getting a job afterwards. So I would say 100%. Um, is there opportunity to participate? in biostatistics related research projects in Imperial College, like causal inference and survival analysis. Yeah, yeah that's all part of, um, of the uh, term one and term two teaching. It, it, you, will, you will be exposed to that and you will be asked to run a lot of uh, analysis in this scope. Would you say this course is translational into the bioinformatic job market? Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's not, it's more about data ana analysis and interpretation, but this, these are skills that bioinformaticians are eager to get. Indeed. We have on the algorithm a... side, but and more on the an analytics and interpretation, but that's very complementary to uh, to the other fields of bioinformatics, but yes, it'll be very employable in, in this um, in this area. So we had a student who um, completed our course and well, actually throughout the course, she was working on a bioinformatics specific degree, uh, sorry, not degree, a research topic. Um, and we do teach uh, students uh, computational skills like how to uh, use uh, Unix, or, or bash scripting, how to run things on the server, for example, how to do parallelization on a server, and all of these are translatable into the bio, in bioinformatic job market. Um, okay, next question by Santosh Mohan. Are there, are there any hospital-based research projects? Yes, yes. We've, um, we've had some project with the um, NHS. We've had, uh, <clears throat> we also, as a school of public health, we're very, very closely linked to several hospitals. And so we have to um, analyze hospital, we can uh, analyze hospital data. So that comes in the form of specific projects, for instance, where we looked at the characterization of the response or the burden of uh, certain hospitals following COVID, that the, these were hospital data. Uh, we have some specific uh, data sets on specific outcomes also to look at and thinking about uh, neuro um, degenerative diseases that we're, uh, we have connections with and we also look at hospitalization data through uh, some large databases like the UK Biobank where we have access to the um, hospitalization data. And we've also had in the past uh, a student uh, was a medical uh, doctor and was working in the hospital and he set up his own research project using data from that um, from the chain of private hospitals so that that's also another opportunity so if you already work in 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 the area uh, you can always try to um, propose your own student project as well um, okay so last question I believe from Elizabeth so, Jack, apologies if I'm getting this wrong. Uh, what type of skills would a successful applicant possess? Uh, envy. 
and uh, motivation to uh, to do our calls for good reasons and being being bright that that's the only, only skills that we we're, we're, we're eager for so it's a bit irrespective of your background in terms of mess of uh, approaches as we said before as long as we are convinced that you're doing this course for the uh, good reason and that it fits your uh, ambition and that you have uh, an excellent background then you're good to go so i know it's it's a bit like a, a very vague answer but this is how we do our selection if we're convinced that you you are able to uh, learn things quick, efficiently and that what you're going to be taught in our course is relevant to what you want to do then you have a good chance of being uh, offered a seat in our course any question more are we done um i think we are done i don't see any other questions okay so um, we can wait maybe oh there's always a few um okay if there is competition for the same project what is the selection process in picking which students get the project well usually it it's it's uh as i said either sometimes we can split a project into two different projects that are a bit different or students can have another one that they're interested in but so far we were lucky not to have anyone being upset about the <laughs> the project that they ended up with so it's not going to answer your question it's not going to be two person working on the same project if there is a very very uh, competitive project then either we try to multiply uh, get another project that looks alike that looks at the data in a different way or look at a different outcome in the same setup so and that's at the discretion of the supervisor if they can accommodate more students but usually that worked or uh, which was also regularly the case students are interested in more than one and the other one is uh, free uh, uh, more less competitive or at the end of the day students end up with a project they're excited about Um, so there is another two more questions. Um, do you think mental health data analysis would be relevant would be a relevant topic for a project? Yes, we, we, we've worked on um, we've offered several projects on mental health. Yes, for sure. Okay, then the next uh, question is if I would like to participate in a specific research project, should I directly contact the professor uh you can but uh yeah of course you can and that's also part of the uh, learning experience and of the imperial experience that can get access to people but at the end of the day we need to sign off to make sure that the project also takes all the learning objectives that we need for for the course so we'll be involved at some point in designing the project but initial contacts could be initiated by the students no problem yes so we've had several projects like this on yeah. on the course where the student has contacted so um for example the uk dri uh, they've contacted professors from there and then you know they um, set up a research project and they end up working on that. So as long as, as Mark was saying, it it satisfies the requisites of the core of the research project, then generally speaking, that it's um, the project is approved by us. Um, another question: What about project topics that indirectly relate to public health topics? Uh, so this person has done work in early education and childcare access and wonder if anything is applicable there. In principle, yes. Well, it has to be to have a health component. It could be public health, could be population health, so that's quite wide. So, but um, in principle, the topics that you're listing are, uh, are, are fit for purpose, and these are, are domains that we can consider, of course. Any other question? No, not that I can see. Okay. Then if we don't have any more, I would like to thank you again for your attention. 
uh, encourage you to apply because as you know and as uh, we've stressed it's a rather competitive program so the sooner you apply this the more likely you are to get a seat there's a, another question yeah so can the course be taken as part-time no unfortunately it's a it's a full-time uh, one year full-time course on site Hey, I don't think there are any other questions at the moment. If you okay. do have any other questions, just reach out. Um, yeah, feel free to, to uh, email us. Mm. All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Hope uh, you found responses to your questions and looking forward to seeing your uh, applications. And again, not willing to generate any panic, but if you want to apply, apply sooner than later. Goodbye. Great. Thank you.